Hi there, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today we're going to look at one of the features for the Dynamics NAV product, and that is called Service Management. Now, Service Management, as the name applies, relates to work you do on products that are out in the market, whether that's a product you've sold the client, whether that's a product the client called you up on and said, I own this, is this something you can help me out with, or uh, something that you distribute and you've purchased the item, sold it to the client, and now there's a certain warranty period for labor, warranty period for parts, but you are tracking all of the time spent, all of the material and product spent, repairing, preventative maintenance, any service work that you do with them, you are now tracking that to a specific item. So with that being said, I am logged into the system as my dispatcher customer service agent. So very focused on service, that's why you see the service active tiles here. Now I do not have sales on here, so I am going to show you how an item can be sold to the client and create the service item or the product specific for them. So keep in mind it doesn't matter how you produce the item or how you acquire the item during the sales process that is when the service item can be created automatically. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm simply creating a new sales order. I'm going to go ahead and hide some of those fields. Too much information on screen. And we will uh, select a customer that I use so they do have a credit limit check. That's okay. And we're going to pick a shipment date. Let's say something slightly in the future for uh, the work date that we're using. Same thing for the requested delivery date. We'll use the 16th as well. And we'll go ahead and use an item that I have set up for this. Now the item I'm going to use uses the assembly management. It does not matter if that's what you use or not. Just understand that that is how I'm going to produce the item. It is serial number tracked, so I want to use that item because I want you to see how the serial number goes to the service item so that as soon as the client owns the product, they have the product, I'm tracking the work I do against a specific product and serial number so that I know exactly what my costs were for warranty periods and that sort of thing for that specific item. Not just the customer, not just the group of products, but the specific product that I use. Okay, so I'm going to key in a quantity of one. It tells me I'm not able to make the one. I do know I have some components that are out of stock. That's okay. I'm just going to say yes to that. That creates my assembly order automatically. Now I do need to assign the serial number to this item. So I'm going to drill into the service document. And once I've drilled into the service document, that I can uh, assign the item tracking to it. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go into navigate and then item tracking lines, which is how I assign serial numbers. So I'm going to go to actions, assign serial number, and then it's going to tell me um, how many do I want to create. In this case, I'm just creating one, so I'm going to say OK. It uses the next serial number in the list so I can know what label to put on uh, that item, and I'm going to hit OK. So I've assigned a serial number to this item. Once it's created, then I will be able to have that tag to the item and off to the customer. So that's it. Assembly management is kind of great. Uh, it has all the components. It's going to reduce my components from my inventory. It's going to produce my finished good. And it's going to, when I ship it, create the service item in that customer's lot of service items so that I can track my work against it. So with that being said, uh, I am going to just record a posting date. We'll use the work date. And I'm going to go ahead and ship my quantity of one. So I'm going to post my shipment here. And what this is going to do is it's going to do two things. One, track that I've shipped the product to the customer, track what serial number it was. And it's also going to create that service item that I talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of my sales order done for now and I want to show you the service item that that's just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my group of products out in the market that we are tracking. These are not inventory items. None of these items are in my stock inventory. These are items that either come into us and we do work on or we go out in the field and we repair them. Or this is just a way of classifying a actual service work, not a product, but a service that we do for somebody. So in this case, we have it, ATO with serial number. Uh, it is the XYZ 
with a couple zeros in the five. That is the one we just produced. So I can track more information about this product. Now it has some defaults based on how I had the system auto create it. So it has a response time of 24 hours. So when the customer calls up and they have a problem with this item, I know that I have 24 hours to respond to it. It is a low priority. So this is not a item that if it breaks down, um, then a plane can't take off or something like that. This is a, a low priority item that someone barely uses in their shop, something like that. You can adjust all of these settings. This is just how I have it default in. We shipped it to the client on the 31st, so that was the start of my warranty periods. Now I can have different warranty periods for parts as I do for labor. So depending on how much of the parts or labor I want to cover, I can control that. In this case, I forgot to fill in my percentage, um, but this would typically be, let's say, 100% um, for the uh, parts and maybe 75% of labor or something like that. I'm getting reimbursed by my manufacturer if there's a problem with it or the vendor that sold me the product if I didn't build it myself would reimburse me for this, not the customer. And so I'm tracking that. I can see the components for that product. So uh, the components, what you do is you go up and you say, now this works if I assembled it or I manufactured it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy in my uh, components list of what I know went into that. Now this is important because when I replace items or if I repair a component within it, it's gonna allow me to track moving those components in and out of the uh, assembled item or the service item for this customer. If I add something new to it, it's gonna allow me to add to that components list. So if they add on a part later, I can add that to my components list and know that that's on there. I can see every piece and every detail of what I've sold to them as long as I had that set up in the system or I enter it manually. Now that's enough about the service item. Understand that this is now in my system uh, forever. I'm gonna see statistics on this, which is gonna tell me how much labor did I spend on it? How much material parts did I put into this item? What has been my cost over the life of selling this and servicing this for my customer? I'm gonna be able to track that kind of information. I'm also gonna be able to track how accurately did I hit my response time? Is 24 hours enough or am I missing the mark on that? I need to set my expectations with my customers at a different time period. So there's a lot that can go into that. Now what happens when that customer calls me up? So I just sold it to them, but we're gonna step in the future and say uh, six months down the road, they have an issue. And they say, hey, I'm, I'm having some weird noise come off the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna get a call. My service tech is gonna call, uh, pick up the phone, talk to the customer understand who it is. Okay, yeah, I know who I'm talking to. Uh, they still have a credit limit bound, so they're not paying their bills. That's okay. And then I'm going to say, okay, what is it that you're you're calling about? And I know that they're calling about, and I didn't look at the number 44. There we go. Yes. Okay, so um, I put in the service item number. If I did not know that item, uh, I could always drill into it, and then I could search by any number of things, a description of that item. Uh, the serial numbers for that item. And notice that this is a filtered list, okay? So this is just service items related to that customer. Very important, I'm not looking through everything all over again. I'm looking at just the products that I know this customer has. Uh, if, the, if the item was not in here, that tells me that they bought it from somebody else and now I'm being requested to do the work on it. So maybe I track that kind of information in the system so that I know how many products is this customer buying from somebody else but asking me to do the service on. And maybe that's okay for you, maybe that's not. But you could always say new item, in this case a new service item that I'm gonna track for this customer. So I know which one it is, I select that item, it's going to pull in the default information for me. If this was under contract, if this was still under a warranty period, all of that information is still going to be tracked here. So the response time, uh, when I need to respond by in order to fulfill this customer's request. What status is this repair in? So this is the initial repair request. Uh, it could be something that's in process or uh, on hold or pending payment or something like that. So there could be any number of things. I see that it's still under warranty. That is checked so I know uh, that I'm either going to get nothing or very little from this customer for the work that I do. But that's okay. That's uh, what warranty is all about. 
and then I can track okay well I need to uh, understand what this customer is going to need based on what they've told me so I could go ahead and start tracking some information about it so fault area codes it's in the uh, muffler area or it's in the um, piping and what's the symptom it's making loud noises what's the resolution for that I could go through some troubleshooting steps with the customer but if they told me hey it's making some funny noises well I can go ahead and get my standard service uh, information for that so I typically know that I need to replace a belt if it's squeaking or something like that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's a new component and we're gonna say okay now that popped up a box and I blazed through it and I should have paused there but it asked me is this a new component is this one of the existing components or do you just want to ignore it and the reason it asked that is because when I picked the uh, standard service because I know that they told me that it's screeching that I went ahead and defaulted in some parts and some labor that typically go with that so that I know what to load on my truck what to send out to my client to make that repair I can see that information here in the service lines. So because I knew that they told me it was squeaking, I'm typically going to need a fan belt and I'm going to need one hour of labor to install and replace that fan belt. I'm also going to know that based on the warranty, that even though it's a 550 unit price, it's zero dollars. And even though it's $35 unit price, it's only $875 because of my warranty period. The system is tracking that for you. You no longer have to play guessing games on is this billable? Do I need a charge for this? It is tracking the information for you as long as you set up the, the parameters for the system to track that information with. My technician goes out and does the work and then they can record that time either through the nav timesheets, they can come into uh, our service item worksheet and adjust their time, adjust who actually did the work, all sorts of ways of tracking uh, the actual cost against that item. And then once I'm done with it and I, I know that I'm finished, I can go ahead and ship and invoice that to the customer. Now shipping just means I'm consuming whatever components I told the system I needed for the repair. I'm not really shipping them, I'm just consuming them. And then I'm invoicing them. So even though we have a lot of it under warranty, there's still some profit to be made there, so I'm going to bill for whatever I can. I'm doing that right from the service document. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm just billing it right from here. Uh, and so that's, that's service management in as uh, quick as a time frame as I can put it. There's a lot more to this system, uh, but I want to just make you aware of, of some of the capabilities there. Now I'm doing this all through the Windows client. A lot of people are starting to say, well, how can I make this mobile friendly? How can I get this where all of my technicians are on uh, iPads or some kind of tablet device? Uh, and for that, uh, NAV has the uh, tablet client, uh, which is through a browser. So it doesn't matter what kind of tablet. It's not an app that you buy. Uh, it is just a, a, a browser-based tablet client. Now I'm on a touch machine. I'm going to park my mouse over here on the left. When I click on certain items, so I'm going to push on my service orders, it's going to pull up my list of service orders. In this case, just the one. And then I can always uh, say what I want to do with that item. I want to go ahead and edit it pull up the information. So I am using a tablet device to pull up information inside of my nav database. Now that means the tablet has to be uh, internet friendly, meaning it has to have a internet connection either through a Wi-Fi connection or uh, just through the internet service that some service provider can provide for that tablet. But this is a way of, of being able to have them mobile, have them out in the field, and either enter this information on their own or just record time here so that a supervisor can then later review it. And then they can always, I mean, it's a tablet client, so they can swipe back and get back where they're going. If they're more stationary, if they have a laptop, uh, they could also use what we call the web client. And the web client is designed to provide the same functionality as the Windows client, the one I was using before, so it looks very much the same with the tiles, but it's now instead of having to have a PC, I'm using a browser on any kind of workstation. It could still be a PC, a Windows machine, but I'm out of the office, I don't want to install any software on this machine, I'm just going to use it through the internet. And so just a different approach to it, this is the web client, uh, then there's the tablet client, 
and then there's the Windows client. So I have a whole different video on just the different interfaces that you can use. Understand that service management is available in all of them. Hope it was a good video for you. Hope you found some good information here. If you have questions, if you have uh, comments or want to know more about this, want to have a follow-up one-on-one with me, glad to do so. Please reach out to us either through our phone number, through my email, or through our website. There's a contact form on there as well. So appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate anyone that subscribes to our channel, likes our videos. Feel free to pass it around forward to your uh, business partners, your colleagues, and, and make people aware of this content. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.